Uh, we're about to start, everyone, if you will. Um, you know, we're still in the theme, second lesson, I believe, in the theme, After God's Own Heart, the theme, A Fresh Look at the Ten Commandments. I'm really enjoying this, you guys, because uh, just the mere fact the author uh, have on there the fresh look. I'm looking for uh, different things. And then give me something to literally be energized by, uh, 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 energized for. And so uh, this one today, honor God, honor God. Good morning, Brother Frank, mm -hmm. Sister Pat, uh, Cotton Rito. Okay. I see, I'm seeing them, seeing them coming in. Coming in. There go Johnson, Johnson, Brother Johnson, Deacon Johnson, <laughs> Sister Adrian. How's everybody? Oh, Frankie's there. Hey. Amen. 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 So, with that said, let me uh, let me uh, let me do the devotional uh, right now. In fact, everyone on the devotional, what I did, I, I picked a devotional scripture similar to what I had written on the. Uh, I guess the narrative that I wrote this week, I read with that devotion of scripture still in Matthew 6, 9, if you will. And so I have it here in my notes. Let me read that. And then I'm going to go right into prayer. And then after I pray, I'm going to sort of enlarge upon that, if you will. So let me just read that scripture. Uh, you probably have it in your notes, hopefully, in, for, with the outline. Matthew 6, 9, our Father in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And so I want to emphasize on the word hallowed be thy name, if you will. H A L L O W E D, Matthew 6 9. And so I think I had put in the note 6 9 B, but that scripture is a devotion I want you to salah or maybe meditate on it as we go through the lesson today. Let me bow head, well, let me bow my heads. I'm hoping you'll bow heads with, with us, and then we'll pray in, and then we want to enlarge on that devotional, if you will. Father and Father, we come before you, bow heads, humble hearts on this beautiful, well, I guess a, 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 a pandemic, foggy, uh, smoky day. We thank you once again, uh, uh, well, you said in Matthew 28, the Great Commission, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And even in this pandemic and this uh, 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 fiery season that we have, you're still right here with us, and we thank you. We thank you, Father, for your promises that you made uh, many, many years ago. We, we don't uh, know exactly how many, but that you will never leave us nor forsake us, and we just thank you that your promises is always uh, correct and always on time. And Father, as we go, in, in, in prayer this morning. We want to thank you also for your hand of grace, mercy, goodness, kindness, long suffering, patience, loving kindness, to name a few of your attributes to us and through us. You'll continue to be better to us than we are to ourselves. Many of your blessings that we know and feel and see around us, but many of the, uh, your blessings we can nor see nor understand uh, how they are benefiting us, but uh, the mere fact that we have life, not bodies, we know that is true. And so you tell us to go by faith. The just shall go by, uh, shall, shall live by faith. And we thank you for uh, the, those reminders as you continue to uh, speak to, to us in your word. We continue to ask for forgiveness of any unconfessed sin that we may have committed since rising up this morning. We confess that through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and through him we come asking for forgiveness forgiveness and cleansing in his name. Cleanse us with hyssop, Father, as David would say, as we move about on the 13th day of September 2020, a pandemic year. We pray that you would just continue to uh, keep us within the realms of Christ Jesus as we move about. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are glad to be in it. And Father, before we close down, we want to just continue to pray for each other, ourselves. Uh, as well as our family members. It's me, it's us, so oh Lord, to stand in need of prayer in Jesus' name. Each of us uh, among this class right now want to lift up each other as well as each other 
and uh, uh, family members also in Jesus' name. We pray, Father, that you would just guide us, direct us as we go through this lesson. Today, uh, we are coming also from Exodus 20, uh, the third and fourth commandment, but also you are taking us in Psalm 145. A few verses there is David exhibit uh, how he honor our Lord. And so we thank you for these illustrations that you have continued to give us. And more than anything, you have given us the original, the genesis of um, the commandments in Exodus, the Old Testament. And we thank you for that. We pray that you would establish our hearts on this day. Hide us behind the cross and allow your spirit to speak to us and through us. And we'll be sure to continue to give you all the glory, the praises, that honor. And the church said together, in Jesus' name, we say together. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Really good lesson. Good morning, Sister Bagley, Sister, uh, Brother Broomfield, Sister Tanya, Brother Michael, uh, 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 Brother and Sister Watson, uh, Sister June, Sister Sandra, uh, who I see over here, the Weavers, <laughs> the Weavers. I can't call everybody <laughs> names, you guys. You guys can forgive me. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm trying, I'm learning. Um, so uh, I had just read the uh, devotional scripture before I prayed of uh, everyone, and so I was uh, telling everyone, I want to enlarge upon it. I, I showed the same one I sent the notes on, the little narrative that I tend to send. That was the top scripture, Matthew 6, 9. If you, I think I just hit the B portion, hallowed be thou name. And the scripture, our Father, as Jesus is teaching them, giving them the template, template, uh, how to pray, the disciples, is, if you will. And you know, he said, pray like this, our Father, our, our, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And we are talking about, good morning, Sister Janine, uh, we, are, we are talking about uh, honor God. Uh, so that's why I want to focus on that a little bit this morning, if you will. Let me enlarge upon hallowed be thy name. How it be thy name more correctly is translated. Now listen to this, a Hebrew translation, if you will. Uh, this is really good. And I think uh, 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 Brother Grisby, uh, his wife, Sister Grisby, have a Hebrew Bible. Really not be say we want to get one, we haven't yet. But listen to how the Hebrew Bible, um, uh, this scripture reads, uh, how it be thy name in the Hebrew Bible, if you will. Let thou name be made holy. Let thou name be made holy. A little, a little different, uh, uh, a little better translation, if you will. Uh, 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 the, the name of God stands for God, for all that he is. The question becomes, in what way can you and I make God's name holy? I got to answer, good question. First, in our daily lives, we are to make God's name holy. Example, when Abraham went to, uh, into Canaan, as his neighbor was watching him, everywhere Abraham went, he built an altar to God. Everywhere he went. Now think about that, if you will. Everywhere he went. And you recall, when Noah came off the ark, the first thing he did is to build an altar to God in, in chapter 6 of Genesis, if you will. Well, I think that's further over, but, you know, that's where it started right there when God put all eight of his family in the ark to protect them uh, from the flood, if you will. But after that, around maybe um, eight or nine chapter, when they came off the ark, the first thing he did was to build an altar to God. That's honoring God. You know that. And that's what we're talking about today, that emphasis on honoring God. And, and when he began to do business in his Abraham, we're talking about now. And when Abraham began to do business with his neighbor, in, in the Canaanites, they found him to be what? Honest? They found that everything Abraham said invited their confidence. In other words, there was confidence that this guy was going to do the right thing towards them. What does uh, 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 Micah say in Micah 6, 8? Uh, what does the Lord have me to do? 
what was it said? It said to, to be, to do justly, to love what? Mercy, and to walk humbly before your God. And so that's what the picture that you see right here as Abraham was in Cana, didn't know them, didn't, didn't know the culture and everything, but one thing he uh, 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 did that they watched him, as his neighbor watched him, he built the altar to God. They found that everything Abraham said invited their confidence. Finally, they reached a conclusion. They reached a conclusion about Abraham, this the peculiar guy right here, that the God that Abraham worshiped, Wisham, E.D., was a holy God, a holy God. And finally, someone said, uh, in, in Genesis 21, 22, if you will, this is a quote, not the complete quote, it said, God is with thee in all that thou doest. God is with thee in all that thou doest. Uh, Genesis 21, 22, not complete, but that you get the portion of, uh, what is so important right here. Uh, and I also see, the, my notes right here says, also see Genesis 23, 6. Uh, meaning on that scripture right there, I just read uh, 21, 22, meaning Abraham entire life revealed what? A reverence, a reverence to God. Surely the name of God was made holy in Canaan because of, Ab because of Abraham. Surely the name of of God was made holy in Cana because of Abraham, the life we live in honoring God should be holy because he is holy. And so that's what we're talking about today, uh, if you will, honoring God, honoring God. And that's, I wanted to give you a little tease out, uh, enlarge upon that our Father in heaven, hallowed be thou name, hallowed be thou name. Good morning, uh, Sister Rochelle. Good morning, Sister June. Who else I see? Sister uh, Cotton Rita, Cassandra, Sister Gardner. So I'm thinking, I'm trying to say good morning to everybody. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I see your face. I'm so, so happy. So uh, bear with me, if, if you will. And so I had a key verse. I'm not going to uh, go into that right now. You have it from your notes that you received. But what I, I do have, I have some questions that as we go through this and talk about this this morning, honoring God, or honor God, if you will, our title, and please don't forget what we are, our theme is after God's own heart, a fresh look at the Ten Commandments. And we were saying a few minutes ago, we do have two of the commandments, well, we had two of them last week, and today we do have two commandments in this particular lesson, then we're going to uh, Psalm 145, if you will. But let me just, I have a couple of questions that I want you to also meditate on as you continue to meditate on that devotional scripture, Matthew 6, 9. <clears throat> here, uh, in this session two, here, here's the, the question. About three or four of them is from the book, the text, and one of them is not. And so here's the first one. What are some ways people dishonor or make light of God's name? Page 31, if you will. The next one on page 34. What does it look like to bless the Lord each day? What does it look like to bless the Lord each day? Emphasis on bless the Lord on page 34, if you will. And then on page 35, what do you appreciate about God's works in previous generations? Oh, there's so much I can appreciate about that. I just love reading and studying the Old Testament because it gives me so much principle. Just in the beginning, God, you know, in the book of Genesis. Uh, imagine Dr. Maris here right now. He'll take that and go away with it. In the beginning, God, you know. And so uh, principle, uh, what, uh, what was that? What do you appreciate about God's works in previous generation, page 35, if you will? And then here's the last one in the text or the study guide. How can we declare God's works to the next generation? And you know, that is so uh, uh, good, especially in today's time, because one of the most important things, you know, Dorley and I, we have a ministry also beside this right here that we, um, my job, I was on it for about 38 years. 
And now they're trying to uh, do an awareness ministry in the uh, field that I was in. So many minority kids do not consider agriculture, if you will. And so that next generation, we're trying to at least give them some fresh ideas, enlighten them, as well as enlarge their understanding on what agriculture, how important it is, if you will, in that sense. I was doing it for 38 years. We just uh, 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 have that inquisitiveness in the sense on all the things that agriculture do does for the world. And so uh, keep that question in mind, if you will. How can we declare God's work uh, to the next generation, page 36. And here's the last one, if you will, not listed, but here's the last one I found in the advanced book, I believe. Uh, how has this study in the third commandment made you aware of ways you have failed to honor God's name? Let me read it one more time. How has this study of the third commandment, third commandment, this third commandment is huge. In fact, I think that's the one I picked as a key uh, verse for today, if you will. How has this third commandment made you aware of ways you have failed to honor God's name? And so keep those questions, and maybe someone want to comment on those. They may have other comments. Either way, both is okay uh, uh, with us in that sense. And so uh, uh, let me just... Uh, Brother if, Jimmy. Okay, go ahead. I just want to talk about that first question that you talked about, which was to uh, ways people dishonor God. Mm -hmm. I remember back when I was I was working, and uh, people, some of the guys would say, "Well, we got to have a come to Jesus party," mm -hmm. or something like that. And then the next thing they do, they're using profanity or doing things that are against God. It's like they just uh, frivolously use the name. Mm -hmm. And then another thing. Uh, mm -hmm thing people always say is oh my god mm -hmm. and they don't worship god they just want to say mm -hmm. oh my god and it really really gets under my skin mm -hmm. and uh so those, those are the couple things right there then another thing is uh you talked about how we honor god and you know that i teach the finance class so mm -hmm. we honor god by giving back because like i always say there's always going to be poor people yes. and a lot of people if i see them Maybe if they're spending too much money, they should be honoring God with their with their wealth. And he starts blessing you with more if you know how to use what you have. Mm. So those are some things right there that really gets under my skin right there. Praise God. Praise God. Sister Adrian. Sister Adrian. Amen. My hand looked big in the screen. Sorry. I'm like, I had, you know, I was doing this lesson and I came across that question, and my children and I have this conversation about reverencing God's name and I and I, I've had to think about it generally generationally and how uh -huh. irreverence for me is not irreverence for them mm. um, because it is for me so they might they both bought t-shirts that said God is dope and mm. they were like do you want one and I'm like I'm not wearing a t-shirt that says God is dope mm. because for me it was irreverent for exactly. them it was witnessing yeah so I've had to Yes, keep God's name holy, but I had to also remember what that looks like in biblical days, in our day, and for them. Amen. Because Amen. What, what was irreverent for me, I'm not wearing a God's dope t-shirt. I just don't feel comfortable. But for That's them, right. Amen. It speaks to their generation, and they're not wearing it irreverently. Right. So I had to take a look at my own legalism Amen. and my own, you know, and of course we have to filter it through the word of God, but I had to take a look at, okay, relax, because Amen. I know that they're wanting to honor God. And right. even if I feel like they're doing it wrong, he will honor their desire to honor him. And he, he will correct them if they need to be corrected. But I struggle with that. I'm like, God is dope. God is, dope. God is holy. Amen. Amen. And the way the kids, the younger generation, they said in uh, honor. Well, you and I, we can, I can understand. Well, some do and some don't. God know the heart. God know the heart. That's the good part of it. That's right. Good. That's good. Amen. That's good. Sister Sandra. Sister Sandra. Amen. We can't hear you, Sister Sandra. Sister Sandra, unmute. Unmute. Amen. There you go. There okay. You go. Amen. Okay. Relating to what Cortez said about the term, oh my God. Amen. Amen. That is something that really, really bothers me too. And I even hear Christians use it mm -hmm. because it's become such a common thing. 
Mm. My granddaughters, even when they were in preschool, they came home mm -hmm. saying it. Um, and we had to uh, tell them that we don't say that. That's, that's not honoring God. Mm. But even little kids will be saying that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just, and in the, on Facebook, people put OMG. Mm -hmm. which means yeah. the same thing you see that a lot and i think um i don't know maybe i'm just i'm even from an older generation than adrian Amen. so uh god is dope is not good for me either yeah. but oh my yeah. god is something that just has seemed to become something that is common amen and you know we're the baby boomers you know, for some reason i have a son also he's 38 we have the baby boomers and his his way is different from my way, but we try to get along. <laughs> Sister Mosley, I'm I'm mute. Amen. Amen. Now, now you. I um. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I, good morning. I was looking at question four. Amen. But I have a. What it's going to lead to another question. Uh huh. That's okay. Um for the group, I guess. Amen. And I was, uh, what I said, what do you appreciate about God's work in previous generations? Well, the things that stood out for me was um, how God showed his love for Israel. Mm. And, uh, how, you know, not reading about redemption and miracles and, mm -hmm. uh, um, and then to see how God was there with them through Israel, fire at night for warmth and the clouds during the day for protection. That's right. And, uh, but it kind of made me think of, is it easier to see because we read about and appreciate God's work in previous generations versus in the generation that we're in right now? Oh, okay. And so I thought about that and I'm like, well, I kind of struggle with that because I, I, you know, I, I read it and I can see it. It's tangible here. That's right. And I see God's work in my life, but is it easier for, like I said, is it easier to see it because you read about it versus uh, understanding it and seeing it more readily today? I see, yeah. Are we more conscious of it today, it seems like it, for some reason. And I feel sometimes, everyone, as I grow more and more in the Word of God, things just like it just, it, it, it just become more visual. <laughs> And uh, it's kind of scary sometimes. Let me do this, everybody. Oh, I know we got a lot of comments, a lot of questions, what you have you, but we do need to read the scripture. The Holy Spirit won't leave me and, alone. And then since Rochelle has her hand up, she's going to read the first section when we get back to her. And Amen. <laughs> okay. Yes. okay. Amen. And so let me, let's do this. I want to do a read the subtitles, and then I want three people just, uh, Sister Rochelle, do the first one. First, uh, first one, Sister Kylie Rita, if you will read the next one, and then how about uh, Sister Bagley read the last one? Amen. So let's do with that. Let's do with Nora Lee first reading the subtitle. Let's go in that order. The first section we are to honor God's name and everything about Him. Exodus 27 through 11. Amen. Yeah. Second section we are to honor God through our worship. Mm -hmm. Psalms 145. One through three. Amen. One, last one is we are to honor God through our testimony and actions. Psalms 145, four through seven. Everything, you know, Dorley just uh, uh, highlighted, uh, narrated all the, everything about him, you honor God. Mm -hmm. The next one, uh, through our worship, mm -hmm. no question about it. And then the last one, we are to honor God through what? Our testimony and action. If we're mm -hmm. not just, you know, talking about it, but also in our action, and our walk. We, and welcome uh, the Watsons. We know you had technical problems, but welcome. Good Amen. morning. <laughs> Amen. So let's read it, everyone. Let's read the three sections. We're going to start off with Sister Michelle, Sister Cotton Reader, and then we got Sister Bagley on the last one, if you will. Let's do that. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Exodus um, 27 to 11. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will, will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy works, 
but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou shalt nor thy son, nor thy, thy daughters, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy strangers that, that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sun, the sun and all that is, hmm. oh, the sea and all that is in them, and resteth the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Amen, amen. amen. Oh, King James Version, Sister Michelle. <laughs> we'll get back to your question. We'll get back to your question. Amen. And uh, Sister Cotton Rita, amen. Okay. Praise, Praise God. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading from Psalms 145, verses 1 through 3. Amen. And the word says, I will extort thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Mm. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise, praise God. God. Uh, and now, Sister Bagley, the last section. Uh, this is Psalms 147, verses 4 through 7. 145. Well, I'm sorry, 145, verses Amen. 4 through 7. One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness and shall sing of thy righteousness. Mm, mm. Amen, amen. And you know, I, I would sort of remind, I'm reminded as Sister Bagley was reading that right there, I'm reminded as we came out of Ephesians about, I think we were in there about six weeks, everyone. And I'm reminded, if you will, remember the three chapter was doctrine. And so I'm looking at this right here, uh, Exodus doctrine. And now David over here in 145, if you will, he's telling us to put this to work, uh, put it in action, uh, uh, literally have it in your daily life, you know, walk the walk now. We talked about it in Exodus, which I chose, I think I, I said a few minutes ago, we got three, I'm sorry, we have two commandments in this particular lesson. Uh, uh, verse 7, and then we drop down to verse 8. And then 9, 10, and 11 is expanding on verse 8, if you will, which is the fourth commandment. Uh, seven, uh, verse 7 is the third commandment. And so we had two last week, and we have two today, if you will. And so let's, let's do that. Let's go to, I think Sister Michelle had a question. Amen. I didn't have a question. I just wanted to tie into Sister Mosley's statement. You know, it, sometimes it's um, harder to, um, you know, see God working in our lives. And so we look at what happened in the Old Testament. But I have to say personally, since been under COVID these last five and a half months, um, I'm able to see God's work. It feels like things are happening so fast and the world's changing so fast mm -hmm. and I can see the world change and then I can see God's hand coming right behind it. And most likely it's probably because even though I'm working, um, there's not a lot other things happening. And um, um, so my, my spirit is probably um, not dampened by all the things that we usually do. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, this, it is a time to look for God and see how he's working because the ev his evidence is clear. Mm -hmm. Even in the midst of everything that's going on, he is still working. Amen. Amen. Can I have a comment? Still because I'm listening to you. I'm not one to, I'm not one to, like I listen to all you guys all reciting different verses, you know, Psalms and whatever. And Amen. that's good, of course. But, as I look at my life and I look at what I got, somewhere in the Bible I read the Lord say, be deliberate in your actions. Mm -hmm. And so I try to be deliberate each day 
to think of God and what he's done to me and, and how I could honor him hmm. without trying to remember verses, Psalms, this and that, whatever. I mean, just opening your eyes and your daily life, you could see how you could honor him and how he um, looks after you, I guess. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. Um, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. That, that's Amen. how I do it. Because I don't remember verses. Amen. But I know what he's done for me and how he's helping me. And so I honor him. And I try to make it a deliberate action every day. Anyway. To me, this is what David is exhibiting right here, uh, Brother Frank, because he's talking about personal. He's mm -hmm. using the word mind, me, and things of that nature. And so I, to me, what you just said is what this is all about. Your mm -hmm. personal testimony is the best beacon. If you really uh, think about it, uh, you're a beacon for Christ Jesus. And so your testimony personally is the best beacon that you can influence people. I saw Sister Alicia and the twins, then the twins, and then after that, Sister Lovely. Let's go with the twins. Sister Amanda and Alicia. Okay. Yeah, as, this is the honoring question. Um, my, my dad would always tell us that he, he honors God is by singing. Amen. So Amen. like Praise he would used he used to sing for a Catholic church and he would always sing there. And that's how we learned that dad always honors him by singing. And then he would try to join choirs in Christian church, but the directors would feel intimidated by him by his how he sings. Because mm. I know you guys heard him sing. So he always gets problems so he was kind of worried joining this choir the choir that you guys have Amen. but they supported him and they liked how he sung and they always looked forward for him to sing so but dad my dad always says he honors god by singing and Amen. that's what he loves to do he doesn't like singing anymore for public places Amen. and the good part about it you know, we all have sort of, I'm sort of in the work myself, but the church is told to encourage one another. We talk yes. about that, I think. Amen. And that's the good part about it. I saw Sister Lovely, and then after I think I saw somebody else. Let's go with Sister Lovely next. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Um, I wanted to um, answer the question, um, mm -hmm. how this lesson affected me. Um, it says, the one that you said, how has this third commandment made you aware of how you dishonor him or dishonor God's name. Amen. And when I was reading the lesson, what came to my mind is when um, Psalms 145.2 says, every day will I bless thee and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Mm. And it goes on to say, um, down in the next paragraph, David praised God and declared he would bless God every day, mm -hmm. not just on the good days, not just on the days when he felt like dancing and singing in the streets, not just on victory days. No, David pinned his heart's desire to worship God every single day and praise his name forever and ever. Mm -hmm. And then it goes down and says, if your heart does not reflect David's heart, then your worship is fickle. And that stuck with me. Is it based on circumstances and convenience? If it is, that's not worship, that's emotion. Mm -hmm. And then it goes down and it says, further down in Matthew 23, 25, it says, many of us are not as put together and spiritual as we appear on the outside. Mm -hmm. Under the surface, we carry the germs of bitterness, doubt, and ingratitude. And then it goes on to say, he may keep you in the oven, in the oven of adversity, but he desires to shape and sharpen you during the tough times. He mm -hmm. has a purpose for the pain and he seeks to make you increasingly more like Jesus. Choose to honor him with your worship in good times and in bad. And so what, what came to me was um, the last thing on page 35 where it says, whenever you spend time in daily devotion, just to check it off your list, you have left your first love. And that's where my conviction was mm. because I do have daily devotion, but I have neglected on days to conveniently forget because it's inconvenient or my emotions weren't in it. And so I do the play to catch up. Oh, I got to catch up on the 9th, 10th, and 11th. But what I've just said or what I was convicted on is I've deprived that opportunity 
to spend time with God because I had a priority over God. Mm -hmm. And so my daily devotion has to be consistent. That's my altar time. That's my time that I set aside to spend with God, even if it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, you know, the longer, of course, the better. But when I say I'll get to it later or I can catch up tomorrow, mm -hmm. tomorrow's not promised. That's he only right. gives me today. So my conviction was in that when it said, um, do I check it off my list? Mm -hmm. And I, I can honestly say, sadly, that I have done that and I can't do that anymore because that time of devotion is what I have committed to God to say, this is for you, Lord. This is the time that you have given me and I'm making that um, committed decision to do this every morning at this time to meet with you, so. I love what you just said, Sister Love. I'm making that. I'm not finding that. I'm making that. <laughs> That's yeah. Well, can I say something? I like, I, I was reading it last night, something what you said about, oh, I've got to do, I've got to say the Lord's Prayer and then check it off. I've done it. It made me realize that occasionally I would.